Hey everybody, welcome back to part five of building your own crypto portfolio tracking app. This video is going to cover how to build the ability into your application to automatically update the asset prices. If you recall in part four of this series, we set up the ability to run an import JSON script to pull a list of crypto assets from the CoinGecko API. So we're going to continue that expansion of the use of that API and integrate the ability to pull the asset prices. So one of the considerations when using the CoinGecko API is that when you try to retrieve a list of prices for each asset, you need to explicitly identify a list of assets that you want to retrieve from the API. This is why in part four, we we put in the ability to retrieve a list of all the assets first. So now that we have a list of all the valid CoinGecko API assets, we could then now easily build in the ability to retrieve the prices of specific assets that we've added to our asset table. We're going to start by adding a new table called asset prices. And in this table, we're going to use the endpoint as shown here. This endpoint retrieves the, uh, the, the price against the US dollar. So you could change that to adjust to your local currency consideration if needed. And then after at the end, you'll see that there's an IDs equal, right? And this is where you can put in a comma separated value uh, list of asset names that you want to retrieve from the API itself. So we're going to go ahead and put this into the import JSON function. And then just to test this out, and we'll make sure that this is in quotes. And then just to test out, to make sure it's functioning initially, we'll just put Bitcoin there. Additionally, test this by adding another asset if we want to. And we'll just use Ethereum in this case. So the best way to do this is to, we're going to replace this hard-coded string that we put in here. And we're going to use a join function in the Google Sheet. So we're going to stop this string here, and then we're going to add an ampersand on there, which concatenates uh, any value after it. So we'll start by using a join. And what the join does, it allows you to pull a, a range of values and then specify a delimiter between those values. So in this case, we want to specify a comma separated value between each value because that's what the API is looking for. And then for the second input for the join function, we want to specify the range of where the names are located. So in this case, it's going to be the column C here with the asset names. And we don't want the first column or the first row to be included because that's our header. So we'll start it at C2 and then continue down all the way so it accommodates any new records that get added to the table. In addition to this, we'll also want to make sure that we only pull the unique values from this range so that we don't include all of the blanks. Basically, this output would be, if we were to uh, highlight this, a bunch of commas after the fact. So what we'll do is just wrap this in a unique, and that way that'll reduce all the redundant uh, commas in the call itself. And then we'll go ahead and close off this import JSON. And now we have a list of assets that are in our asset table along with the price and all the other relevant information for that asset. So with this done, let's go ahead and add that to our application. We'll see that app sheet's detected it already. We'll just go ahead and click on asset prices. And once again, because we have the, a, we have a, the import JSON function retrieving that data, we want this table to remain read only. So now that we have the asset prices table added to the app, we we'll want to make sure that we go ahead and make sure our columns are characterized how we want them. Uh, we'll want to make sure the ID column is checked appropriately. And in the assets table, we do have this price field here that has been set as a reference. We don't necessarily want that. That was a, wasn't good on AppSheet's part to assume that piece. So we'll just change that back to text. And then we're actually going to take this a step further here and we're going to disable 
and just hide this temporarily for now. Because we're going to be retrieving from the API now, we're going to actually, we're going to add a virtual column here to our app to look up that value from the API. And we're going to call this asset price underscore V. This will be a temporary placeholder. We're going to do a lookup in the asset price table. So the first, we're going to asset name, we're going to use the asset name, then we're going to reference the asset price table and then we're going to target the ID column in that table and then pull current price and then we'll hit save. In addition to that we'll also update our USD value column with our new virtual column in the formulation. So at this stage we've completed what we set out to do in this part of the series. Now, when I'm looking at these crypto assets, when I click on them, I can see that the total value being calculated is based off the price of that asset. And that asset price will stay current based off the API itself. And we could also move this around if we want. We can, you know, add, add these columns here to the app. We we'll move asset price up in the app so we have it more present when we're looking at it and now you don't have to update the prices manually in your application and as you adjust the quantities of your app we'll see that the value updates automatically as well giving you a more accurate view of your portfolio at any given time one additional thing we can add is if you remember in the asset price table, there is an image field that's received in the API response. So we can actually add that into our main table and display the image of the asset. So I'm going to go into our asset table. I'm going to add another virtual column called image. And then I'm going to do another lookup where I'm going to look up the asset name from the asset prices table targeting the ID column and then the image field. And then we'll hit save. And then we'll make sure that our type is an image. And we'll hit done. So now we have the images of each asset automatically retrieved through the API. So with that, thanks everybody for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And we'll continue development on this app in part six of the series. Thanks, everyone, and have a good one.